So yesterday I presented uh, a new data on a new device. The device uh, is called um, a Spur device, the, um, and it's made by a company called Reflow. And uh, the device is unique and, and new in a way because it has the ability to actually um, penetrate the vessel wall in a, a very controlled fashion way and allows uh, the barriers in the wall to be um, opened. So if you were to use a drug water balloon uh, afterward, the drug can actually penetrate the heart of the disease and actually sit in it and do what it's supposed to do. It's a self-expanding stent. So it's delivered to where the target lesion is and uh, you pin and pull, that's what we call it as physicians. So basically you deploy it like a self-expanding stent and then the device will open up and touch all the vessel wall in a uniform circumferential fashion. Then you inflate a balloon that is already inside the device. You inflate the balloon and the balloon will nicely allow the spike to enter into the vessel wall because the disease that we're trying to treat is already in the vessel wall. So uh, this is how it is different from anything else out there today. And then uh, as it penetrates the vessel wall and creates the channels, then you uh, deflate the balloon and then retrieve the stent and you remove it completely. The current state of mind that is different from spur is you inflate a balloon and deflate it and then you hope to create channels with the balloon to create a, a method or way for the drug to make it to the media or the subadventitia versus the spur, actually it guarantees the delivery of the drug to the media and the subadventitia. So this is the major two difference between the two. There's a, a guaranteed delivery versus none. It was used in the tibial arteries and it was used in a very complex component of the disease. So we used task C and D only and maybe 5% that are not task C and D. So 95% are task C and D. So that automatically takes it into a very high complexity of tibial disease. And the spur has the ability to penetrate the elastic tissue which is very difficult to penetrate with a balloon. Then it has the ability to penetrate the internal calcium, which is also very difficult, and also has the ability to penetrate the internal elastic membrane and media calcification. So I just mentioned to you all the major barriers in the tibial artery that have led to all this years and years of failure to reach a good outcome in the tibial arteries. Because we knew that, uh, we knew there's reparative failures in the tibial arteries, we thought if we're gonna be successful uh, in the tibial arteries, we know we're gonna be successful anywhere else. The patency rate uh, that was evaluated by both angiogram and, and ultrasound, and both were adjudicated by core labs, the angiographic uh, patency rate was 86 percent uh, and this is one of the highest reported patency rates uh, by angiography to date. The adjudicated uh, core lab for ultrasound was 80 percent patency rate so uh, also this was adjudicated so it's uh, very exciting to finally have something that we can offer our patients with critical limb ischemia with task uh, C and D at 95 percent uh, of our patients some glimpse of hope uh, in the future.